Hello and welcome to Byju's IAS, presenting to you the daily quiz for 3rd of September 2021. Let us begin and have a look at the first question for today. Which of the following statements with respect to controller general of accounts is or are correct? CGA is an independent constitutional body that derives its mandate from the Constitution of India. CGA is the principal advisor on accounting matters to the union government. CGA is responsible for the disbursement of pension in respect of central civil pensioners, freedom fighters, high court judges, ex-MPs and ex-presidents. What is the context? This editorial column in the Indian Express newspaper today has a reference to the Controller General of Accounts. This article here states that the CGA reports highlight that the fiscal health of the union government is better than what was expected and that the government must spend more to facilitate economic recovery. Now let us understand more about Controller General of Accounts as we answer the question. Please do not confuse the CGA with CAG or the Comptroller and Auditor General of India. The Comptroller General of Accounts derives its mandate from Article 150 of the Constitution of India. But is it a constitutional body? No. The office is in the Department of Expenditure under the Ministry of Finance. So statement 1 becomes incorrect. It is not a constitutional body. And this rules out option A and option D. Now let me know if the Comptroller and Auditor General is a constitutional body. Coming to statement number 2. CGA or the Comptroller General of Accounts is the principal accounting advisor to the Government of India. So statement number 2 becomes correct. Now what exactly is the mandate of CGA? The CGA takes care of general accounting principles related to the central and state governments. Reconciling cash balance of the Government of India, supervising the standards of accounting maintained by the Central Civil Accounts Offices. CGA also administers the Central Government Account as well as the Central Treasury Rules. It is involved in cadre management and also disbursing pension through the public sector banks to all these individuals. So the right answer to our question would be option C, 2 and 3 only. Moving on to question number 2. Which of the given statements is or are correct? India accounts for over 50% of the global production of coconuts. The World Coconut Germplasm Centre is located in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Secretariat of International Coconut Community under the aegis of the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, which is UNISCAP, is in Tamil Nadu in India. Dehust coconut and copra are covered under the government's minimum support price scheme. What is the context? This article in the PIB talks about World Coconut Day which commemorates the foundation of international coconut community under the UNSCAP. And hence we've taken this question. Coconut is a tropical fruit plant that is grown on a large scale in many countries in the tropical as well as subtropical areas. Please note that India is also one of the largest producers of coconuts. But does it account to 50% of the global production of coconuts? No. During the year 2020 and 21, it accounted for 34% of the global production of coconuts. So statement 1 becomes incorrect. Statement 2 is correct. The global collection of coconuts is being conserved at CP Ghat in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Statement number 3 is incorrect. The Secretariat of International Coconut Community under UNSCAP is in Jakarta in Indonesia. Coming to statement number 4. The government announces MSPs or the minimum support price for both Copra as well as Dihas Coconut along with the other Rabi and Kharif crops. Yes, it is covered under the government's minimum support price scheme. Therefore, statement number 4 becomes correct. So the right answer to our question would be option A, 2 and 4 only. Question number 3. Which of the following is or are correctly matched given are the species of turtles and conservation status? Number 1. Red crowned roof turtle, endangered. Number 2. Northern river terrapin, extant in the wild. Number 3. Black softshell turtle, critically endangered. Why this question? This is an article from the Hindu newspaper today. An Indian biologist, Shailendra Singh, has been awarded the Behla Turtle Conservation Award. This award has been given by many global bodies that are involved in turtle conservation, such as the Turtle Survival Alliance, the IUCN SSC Tortoise and Freshwater Turtle Specialist Group, 
the Turtle Conservancy and the Turtle Conservation Fund. And Mr. Shailendra Singh has been given this award for his contribution to the conservation of three critically endangered turtle species. Which are these three? Number one, Black Softshell Turtle. Number two, Red Crown Roof Turtle. And the Northern River Terrapin. So, all these three turtle species have been classified as critically endangered by the IUCN. So, number 3 only becomes correct. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option B, 3 only. Question number 4. Which of the given statements is or are incorrect? Durand Line is an important international boundary line running between Pakistan and Afghanistan. The Durand Line was slightly modified by the Anglo-Afghan Treaty of 1919, meant to be for 100 years and was renewed in the year 1999. Afghanistan was the only country to vote against Pakistan joining the United Nations in 1947. Why this question? This article in the Indian Express newspaper talks about Durand Line. Here we can see the Durand Line. This Durand Line has been an issue of contention for decades and a friction point between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Statement number 1 here is correct because it is an international boundary line running between Pakistan and Afghanistan. The Durand Line was drawn as an international boundary as a part of the issue between Russian and the British empires in the 19th century. In the 19th century, British used Afghanistan as a buffer because they feared Russian expansion to the east. And this agreement demarcating the Durand Line was signed in the year 1893 between British civil servant Sir Henry Durand and Amir Abdur Rahman who was the Afghan ruler. And this Durand line was slightly modified by the Anglo-Afghan Treaty of 1919. And this was meant to be for 100 years, but was it renewed? No. So statement number 2 becomes incorrect. It was not renewed in the year 1999. So in 1947, after the partition of India and Pakistan, Pakistan inherited the Durand line. Pakistan recognized this as an international boundary. But Afghanistan refused to recognize this. Therefore, there were disagreements between the two countries on this issue and Afghanistan voted against Pakistan joining the United Nations in 1947. And it was the only country to do so. Therefore, statement number 3 becomes correct. So, the right answer to our question would be option C, 2 only, since the question asks us for incorrect statement. Now, what has happened is Pakistan has almost completed erecting a fence at the Turan line. And Pakistan believes that given the situation in Afghanistan, that is the Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan, this fence will help control any spillover of conflict or unrest. And the author Nirupama Subramanian says that this very boundary is a potential flashpoint in the relationship between Taliban and Pakistan. Now let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2014. With reference to two non-conventional energy sources called coal bed methane and shale gas, consider the following statements. Number 1. Coal bed methane is the pure methane gas extracted from coal seams, while shale gas is a mixture of propane and butane only that can be extracted from fine-grained sedimentary rocks. Statement number 2. In India, abundant coal bed methane sources exist, but so far no shale gas sources have been found. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? When we look at the first statement, it states that the shale gas is a mixture of propane and butane only. It also contains methane. So statement number 1 becomes incorrect. When we have a look at statement number 2, India does have shale gas resources. So statement number 2 also becomes incorrect. So the right answer to our question would be option D, neither 1 nor 2. The task for you for today is to list out the shale gas reserves identified in India. Let me know in the comment section. Now let us take up the fact of the day which is Blue Straggler. This PIB article today talks about Blue Straggler and the recent findings with respect to these class of stars. So what are Blue Stragglers? A blue straggler is a class of star in a cluster that is more luminous or more bluer than the other stars in the cluster. These stars stand out because they are bigger, they are also bluer than the rest of the stars in the cluster. Remember that these blue stragglers can be a part of the open cluster or a globular cluster. Now let us understand what exactly these blue stragglers are, how they are formed and how are they different from the other stars. We must understand that a bunch of stars born at the same time from the same cloud form a star cluster, right? 
and as the time passes by each star in this cluster will evolve differently and this will depend on its mass. So here this is the main sequence of the star cluster and the most massive and the brightest stars evolve and move off the main sequence and they create a bend in their track and are known as turn off. The stars above this bend are bright and hotter stars. They are not in a cluster and they leave the main sequence and become red giants. So now we know what turn off is and what red giants are. In 1953, Alan Sandage found something peculiar. He found that some stars that are a part of the cluster seem to be hotter than the turn off in the cluster. And they were straggling above the turn off. And these stars were termed as blue stragglers. Later, many studies were conducted on blue stragglers. And it was found that the only way these stars can still be present in the cluster is if they acquired extra mass along the way while being on the main sequence. So now this article says that the Indian researchers have carried out a comprehensive analysis. And this analysis points towards the origin of blue stragglers. The researchers have studied three ways in which these blue stragglers are formed by studying various clusters. Let us understand each of these. Number one is the mass transfer from a close binary companion star. So there are two stars in a binary system and these blue stragglers acquire mass from the other star in the binary system. And that is how they acquire extra mass. And researchers say that 54% of the blue stragglers studied were formed this way. Number two is that they are formed by collision of two stars. And the collision of two stars account for 30% of formation of blue stragglers. And lastly, about 10 to 16% of blue stragglers are formed by multiple interactions that involve more than two stars. So what is the significance of studying blue straggler? It is believed that this study of blue stragglers, that is the stars that are more luminous and bluer than the other stars in the cluster, will help in improving the understanding of these stellar systems. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching and keep learning.